into other conversations now, which is quite useful, and we can certainly have time at the, at the end of this to, to have a look at um, questions as well. But have we got any questions in particular that you would ask that teacher? Anything that, that you think is really important, anything that you've noticed in that picture? I have no answers for this, by the way. I have no right answers. It could be anything. What, boys on one side, girls on the other? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Was that deliberate? Why were they doing one way? Yeah, that's really good. I just wondering how she would deal with the child with the hand up. Yeah. At, at what what stage she would? Okay, yeah, because it depends what she's doing and what she's expecting from the class, isn't it? Yeah. And then you've got this one kid who's going. Yeah, and how she deals with those yeah. questions of children that are clearly really anxious to get yeah. the question. And is it something yeah. that you praise and encourage because you want that kind of behaviour yeah. to carry on, or is it something that no, right now you need to learn actually, yeah. you need to listen? Yeah. 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 Any others? Does she know their behaviours? So does she know they're engaged? Because there's different levels of engagement there in terms of where they're looking and yeah. how chilled out they look. The first thing I noticed as well, these boys back here, yeah. are they engaged? Are they engaged in doing the task that she's setting them? Mm -hmm. Or are they just mm -hmm. like a bit off task and just... Uh, but then at the same time, the kid leaning on a chair might yeah. come across like he looks bored, but actually at the same time, he might look like he's completely enthralled in everything yeah. she's saying and so yeah. all that. Unless you know their behaviours, you might turn yeah. off for looking forward and actually thinking well, yeah exactly so the teacher will know should you know, want her much say, more yeah. and she should be able to say well no this student's perfectly fine because blah blah blah, blah. Yeah. and this student's blah, 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 blah. and yeah and that's what we want from them and wouldn't it be interesting if we could ask the students some questions as well like be able to just sort of go behind and just say okay what's going on with you right here and, and do you get what's going on and so on as well and just assess the progress I'd wonder about her chair, about whether that's like a well-placed prop, whether she uses that yeah. on in order to create that kind of yeah. that environment of, you know, yeah. listen to mother the storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. It's a status thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I know in primary school it's very different anyway, obviously, but, but there is a status with the students on the floor and you on the chair. Yeah. And do you deliberately choose to sit yourself in the chair or do you yeah. join them on their level? And, and if so, what effect yeah. do you have? I know in drama we use that all the time. And the idea of actually being on their level and making it a circle yeah. and so they're equal and all of that. So yeah, the idea of rolling in the yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, good stuff. Thank you so much. All of those questions work. Now this is a lot of writing and I'm not especially necessary to work your way through it, but it's by um, two people who are the learning assistants at the Royal Institute of Drama. Um, Mark Hughes and Ellie Pearson and the person I already mentioned. So Mark Hughes is the head of the Royal Institute of Drama. Ellie Pearson is the head of the Royal Institute of Drama. So Ellie Pearson the person I already mentioned, the subject coordinator of geography. Um, and Chris Mockford, who's also a learning associate. And it's just some stuff that they've said about it. Um, they obviously have done a lot of observations themselves and been observed themselves, so um, they know. Can we get a copy of this for you? Um, yeah, I'm sure I can arrange to, to have it emailed to you. That's, yeah, that's super common. Um, so, okay. boiling it down to brass tacks. The idea of contextualising as a teacher, when you are a teacher being observed, being able to contextualise, I'll give you a story about that. One of my colleagues um, I observed teaching drama, um, and she, she's a real powerhouse of a teacher. She just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And I had to really try and think about, okay, how's the progress working in this lesson? Because it was a lot was happening all the time. It was a year eight drama class, and, and I know, obviously, where year eight should be at that point. And I was watching some of the students and I was like, mm, they're not really where they should be. And so I was managed to go over to her and just sort of say, you know, so tell me about these students, what's actually going on here? Because they're below where they should be, definitely below where they should be. And she just came back at me brilliantly with, no, but their cat scores are this and da 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 And actually, this happened to them last month and this happened to her yesterday. And in actual fact, what she's doing right now is phenomenal for her. And I was like, ah, right. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Bang. Sorted. When, in actual fact, I could quite easily have gone, well, you know, not much progress attained. For that student, for those particular groups of students, phenomenal progress has been attained. And the teacher would be able to concept contextualise it for me. Um, obviously, overt and very open about it. It's the idea, again, of agreeing the folks before you go in. You could agree to look at just questioning, for example, and just focus that. Um, and then have conversations about that all the way through it. It's that openness. Feeling, and then interactive, things can change all the time, the teacher can change things, can bring their grade up within the lesson, if that's what's needed. Um, and then as an observer, and as a head of department, you know you're able to foster these things in the people as well. It's that coaching thing you were mentioning as well, it's that idea of they don't even realise they're necessarily being coached while they're going about it, but you're able to ask those questions and point them in a direction um, that maybe they wouldn't think about when you're just having those normal conversations with them on a day-to-day -day basis. But 
when you're in the middle of it, you all know, when you're in the middle of teaching, it's so much more alive and you can see it happening in front of you than afterwards when you're kind of going, yeah, maybe, and you're a bit more closed to what's being suggested. And again, and this is the exciting thing, you can test hypotheses. I mean, why not try something out? Kind of like what Howard was just talking about. Why not just give something a go? Why not just experiment? You've got another teacher in the room with you. So do a little bit of something that, that's a bit different and try something out and see if it works. And if it doesn't, well, let okay, move on. If it does, then you can try it out with all of your classes. So this allows for that. And then you've got the feedback. Um, what went well and even better if? Um, I know Zoe Elder is doing something on marginal gains at the moment, and she works with us as learning associates, and I'm sure she would mind me saying that she's written a blog um, quite recently about the ideas of what went well in Even Better If, and she's asked us to look at it. And her idea is essentially that we all know what it's like when you get given praise or feedback for anything. You listen to the what went wells, and you're like, yeah, fine, but. <laughs> you know, hang on a moment, but. There's always that but, isn't there? And what you do is you hear the praise, and you kind of go, yeah, fine, whatever. Now tell me what was wrong. And actually her idea, I hope I'm not <laughs> doing anything wrong by telling you, but I'm sure I'm not even looking at her blog. Her idea is what if you turn the even better if into a what went well. So the what went wells, so say that they did really, really amazingly on the questioning, but then possibly, I'm totally fishing now, but possibly like their behaviour management wasn't that good. But anyway, their behaviour management wasn't brilliant. So even better if you use your questioning. How amazing it would be if you're questioning, you're so good at questioning, why can't you use questions like your behavior management better? So that the even better if is integral into the what work well, the what work wells become the even better if, and it's the same thing. So you're not always listening to that but, you're not always listening for that bad moment. And also it makes it a discussion. You have the discussion. Um, sometimes when I do this, I give this form to the observer, to, sorry, the observer, the teacher, to fill in. Sometimes I do it myself, um, and it's just a record of the conversation you have. It's not you're not tied to it. You don't. You're not required to go. Okay, we've got to fill in this section. And now we've got to tick this box. It's just a record of the conversation, and then the key is change, and you decide that um, with again. You decide it with the It's a bit one, a bit easier to read. They are so used to it. I mean, when I was observing that head of geography, it was me observing with Zoe. So there's two of us in the classroom anyway. And then um, poor Ellie, she had she had sick formers then coming in to do some other kinds of observations to do with something that she was doing on another curriculum. And then the head walked by the learning walk. So she managed to have I think at least five adults in the room at one time. And the students just carried on. Year 10 GCSEs, not the nicest kids in the world, but some of them were, were really good. But all of them. No problem, just carries her on, they're totally used to it. And that's the open door policy that's used to them, they're completely used to having. Um, sometimes they do ask, I mean, sometimes it's a bit like, oh, hang on, wait, we've got like, lots of people, but most of them are so used to it. And most of them are actually used to being asked questions by the observers all the time as well, and actually value it. And then they always feed back to you afterwards and say, yes, you're going to guess what she asked me. And I told her this as well, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that kind of feel to it, which is really good. And they do, they tell you the truth, but they, they also, they can speak the speak. You know, they've, they've learned it enough that they know how to. So, and that's because of years of doing it and, and sort of knowing how to do it. Um, Actually, 
it can depend on the focus you have with um, the youth bereavement teacher. You might agree that actually, I'm not going to give you any hints or tips. I'm just going to reflect back what you're saying to me, and I'm just going to make it a pure coaching session. Or it can be no, no, no. Let's go down the training route and actually let's think. But but that will be dependent on the kind of teacher you've got in front of you and how you want to try and utilise this. Um, but I think it's it's very hard in the here and now with students in front of you to be actually right. Let's have a real deep and meaningful about this because actually you've got to turn around and deal with the kids. So. So a lot of times it does veer into training quite a lot, but then that can work as well. It just yeah, depends on which way you want to go with your teacher. Do you ever place a weaker teacher as the observer? Yeah, yeah, I do that all the time. And if they were offering poor advice, the classroom teacher would choose I, to. I would say I don't know that a weaker teacher would necessarily. I think most teachers who know that they're weak in some areas or not know they are, particularly when they're watching a really strong class. So. I, I would never, I, I don't know that they would necessarily would offer that advice, or if they would, then that's the time for the teacher then to turn it around and go, well, why do you think that? Right. So and actually, it becomes a coaching session mm -hmm. the other way around, as it were. I mean, it depends how you do it. You, you know your departments, you know the people who you observe all the time, like the profession, and you can think quite clearly about who would be paired up with who and how they would do it. And also, the other option there is to have a weak teacher in with a stronger teacher as a triad. So um, having two people observe at the same time and then then coaching within that concept. Does it help with off-scale um, observations? Yes, yes. The head, when I was talking to him about this the other day, actually, um, he said more than anything, the idea of um, having this open door policy, people being in and out, and, and having this openness and wanting this, um, wanting people in your classroom has helped with off because when they came last year or whenever it was, the staff were actually much more, instead of sort of going, oh, we've got this, I'm going to run around, just like, okay, let's do a plenary, or whatever it was, <laughs> that thing we all do. Um, instead of doing that, they would actually, they would turn and go, please come in, I, I'd like you to see this, because this yeah. is going on and this is amazing. And it trains the staff to know how to handle that kind of situation and allows them the confidence to be able to do it and handle it. And I think that's the key thing is what we were talking about, is the idea of confidence actually within the staff and, and how it builds up as a tool. How did you um, start the process once you've been decided in terms of working with staff? Was it on a voluntary basis right at the start, or did it just um, roll out as a, you know, this is happening? I don't, I don't think it was ever sort of set as an actual policy. I mean, you're probably better off asking like one of SLT about yeah. it specifically how they planned it. But I know from my perspective, like I said, it was we were used as sort of guinea pigs to try it out and mm -hmm. try and work out whether it worked. And then from them, because we were so enthusiastic about it, we took it into our departments anyway yeah, and it yeah. kind of just went from yeah. there. Yeah. But I would imagine that Gareth or John would be able to tell you that there was yeah. an actual I'm just thinking decision. from a, thinking about our school situation there, you know, there, yeah. there inevitably will be reluctance in some areas or people. Yeah. Um, and there always is, like but I think sweet. sometimes if you do it from the back door yeah. and you get people who are enthusiastic, it becomes yeah. a big school thing without you realising mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm conscious of time. If you want to stay and ask questions, I'm very well, you're very welcome to do so. Otherwise, if you wish to go, um, then, uh, thank you very much.